Hey guys, welcome to the shop. In the last month, I have been asked at least a hundred times, we want to see a crew cab update. What are you doing on Johnny Cash, the 1986 Chevy C30 crew cab that your wife nicknamed Johnny Cash? Where are you at on it? That's what I've been asked. So I've got an update video in regards to the pickup truck, not this one, it's outside. You'll see it. It's taken a ton of work to get to the point that I'm at, and I've been trying to keep this project moving, so I haven't filmed a ton on it. This video is a little long. It jumps around a little bit, so just bear with it. I think you'll see that I've done a ton of work up to this point. There's still a lot to go, but I'm getting really close. The goal with this pickup that we're building is for me and my wife to enjoy it. It's not necessarily for us to film the whole project like I did this one. I just want to get this thing together and, and relax and have some fun. Me and Elizabeth cruising in the crew cab. That's what I want. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoy the video. This truck's been off the road since 2003. So 20 years. It's set in a field for every bit of 15 to 20 years inhabited by nothing but mice. And it was, it was something. So it's coming back around though. So thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoy the crew cab update. I'll have another one before too long, but Hopefully you enjoy this one. So before I show you all that I've got to do on this thing, I'd really like to give you just a brief history of this vehicle, the brief history of it, because I find that stuff really interesting and I'm sure uh, that some of you, you guys will as well. So me and my wife have been looking for one of these for a while um, in really good shape. They are really expensive. So we found this one and it's pretty fair, I guess, condition for, for its age. Uh, picked it up off the local face, Facebook face space marketplace um, and from our investigations as best as we can tell because we immediately stripped out the interior and we found all sorts of clues to the past history of this truck so this thing in its past life was used to haul cattle there was all sorts of cow stuff related paperwork hats and odds and ends in here that told me that this thing hauled, hauled cattle and it come out of Florida so spent probably most of its life down there hauling livestock. Got a uh, gooseneck hitch in the back and this size of truck, you know, it just makes sense. It would probably be a cattle hauler or a horse hauler, whatever, livestock. So we found that it come out of Florida. We found that it hauled cattle. It was sold to the people I'm assuming that we bought it from. It come way up north where we're at. And then those individuals that we bought it from, I think they, pretty much sold the motor and transmission out of it as soon as they got it and then it set for 10 years a decade in a field untouched which well untouched unless you were a mouse and then you they touched it um, interior in this thing we've already got it all stripped out it's actually pretty good surprisingly good for its age this uh, from the best we can tell 53 or 56 thousand mile original truck although it may not look like it it really is a relatively low mile unit. So we're excited about fixing it up. It's really not that bad, but it definitely needs a lot. So let me show you what I've been doing and what I'm doing right now. So no Chevy truck would be complete without rotted out rockers. And this thing had some rod in the rockers, but really not all that bad. And, and you'll see the driver's side uh, and the passenger side front were the worst. The two rear rockers just need some patching. So I've already replaced the rocker on the driver's side or on the passenger side. Rocker, inner rocker was good, which is you know always a bonus. Uh, floor is, is doable. Floors are, are not in that bad a shape. So this side, I already got it done. Basically, no, no filler or anything, but it's done. And now I'm working on the passenger side rear rocker. So I'm cutting that out. Let me show you where I've got on it, what I'm doing, how I'm going about it. And, uh, and you'll see the work that needs done. So I like to pick on Chevy for the rotted out rockers, but really it was, it was all makes and models, especially the farther you go south, the worse that they got. Um, these were bad about uh, salty roads. They'd get moisture and stuff inside, and then it wasn't too long before that salt just ate them up. Uh, this one's not that bad. This will all clean up really well. Had to cut out this area here. Looks like maybe the door seal leaked and it puddled water here and it rotted from the top. Uh, really not bad on the inside other than this back corner was starting to get uh, some rot in it. So cut that out, sandblasted inside, 
painted it and now I'm about ready to cap over top of this. I got to weld up a couple little holes here that are just starting. They're kind of isolated rust hole. Weld that up, cap this, make a piece of sheet metal for the top here and then this rocker will be done. The side of the truck will be done really. So that is the size of the patch panel that I need for this hole. Now, there was just a little rust here, but really, you know, what caused it was a mouse house. Back in here, there's a shelf behind this back speaker, and I guess the over the years, between moisture and mouse uh, pee, it had rotted out this section here. So that is my patch panel that will go right there. So there's the hole that we need to patch, and there is the patch panel. So that top patch turned out really good. No one's gonna see it anyway because it's in the door. You'd have to open up the door to see it. Um, plus I kept it above that line and only cutting out the metal that's bad on this truck. I'm not trying to cut the entire rocker out. If it's got just a little bit of rust on it inside, you know, I'll clean that off with a little sandblaster, prime it, and this, this will last from now on. Once I do the body work on that, you will never see it. And uh, yeah, I'm just, not a huge fan of cutting out the entire rocker when you've got one bad piece. Uh, let's just say, for instance, if you got a little hole here, you cut it out and the rest of it's good, just patch that hole. No reason to cut the whole thing out. Just cause yourself a lot more work. So there we go. Little uh, patch panel that I made. This is just some shelving that I've got that is of the same gauge thickness as the uh, as original rocker or sheet metal on the truck, bend it to the radius of the rocker, and that's it. Just spend a little time making a couple patch panels, buzzing them in, and that will be it on this one. So look at that. Not trying to do show car body work here. Um, just the sheet metal work is done, no filler or anything. I really like the way that it's came out. You know, there's no magic to this kind of stuff. You just gotta keep your panels lower, just slightly lower, like a fraction of an inch lower than what uh, your original panels are. That way, at least where they seam up so you can transition them in with your filler. So all of the sheet metal work on this is done. It turned out really good. So to hold this over until I, until it's time to do filler on it. All I'm gonna do is do the old spray paint just to keep this from rusting until I'm, until I'm ready to come in and uh, do the body work. So I'm in the process of pulling the doghouse off of this truck, which basically, if you don't know what that is, it consists of the hood, the two front fenders, the core support, basically the front end of this thing. And the reason for that is because I've got some rust on the firewall in this truck that I didn't have in the other one. 
and it'll make it a lot easier for me to place that uh, 6.0 LS engine in here if I don't have all of this stuff around me to, to, to have to climb in and out constantly. I've got rust and stuff to fix on this truck. It's no cream puff. As you can see, it's the same body style basically as the, uh, as the brown one that I built. It's got some dents and stuff down the side, but overall, this truck's relatively solid. These things are getting a little harder to find every year that goes by. All the trim and stuff's good on this one, and this one's not going to get all of the all the pieces and parts that the other one got. It will get roadworthy, probably a nice cleanup, interior, wheels, motor, transmission, and you know maybe a few other things. But that's the majority of it, at least right now. Maybe in the future, I'm going to save this thing, keep it from getting any worse, patch up the rust and stuff in it, and then maybe in the future, you know, fix it up super nice. But for now. It's just a get it on the road, have some fun with it job and learn some things because I've never did an LS swap before. So that'll be pretty interesting for me. So I'm working on the firewall of this truck. I am almost done with it. I had to repair some rust in the drip channel here, right below the cowl. If you don't, if you get one of these that's rusty there, it'll leak in the floorboard constantly. So that is a very important area down in here to make sure that it's sealed up. So I had to repair some areas in there that were kind of rusty. And then down here at the bottom, and I've got a rust spot over there as well. So let me show you how I'm gonna make this panel here just super quick, because I think it's kind of neat. And I've never seen anybody do it before. I'm sure they have, but I've never seen anybody use this tool to do this thing. Let me show you. So what I gotta do is make this shape here and get that welded back in. Now, the problem is that this is below or behind this. It kind of goes and then rolls out and over. And it's kind of a hard shape to make. Let me show you how I do things like this. So I'm gonna, I've already got started here just because I want to move things along. And I take my needle scaler, and just start massaging. Basically, this needle scaler just stretches it out.
So fast forward a little bit, and all of this has been repaired. Kind of hard to tell. This is under the heater box anyway. Doesn't make any difference. And if me and Elizabeth in the distant future decide that we want to make this thing really nice and clean up this firewall, you know, this will be all hidden anyway. So it doesn't make any difference. Looks pretty good. Patched up real nice. Super happy with the way that that turned out. You can put it on a little heavier than that. Just you ain't gotta put it super thin. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. Like that? Yeah. Just jam it up in that seam as well. Nobody's ever gonna know that that was fixed. Except y'all. Except everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if you look at the driver's side here, this rocker's pretty bad shape. So I'm gonna cut this out kind of in sections, little at a time, working my way back to wherever the good metal, <laughs> wherever it, the rusty stuff stops and the good metal starts. And I'll probably end up putting in this entire rocker because it's pretty bad. So I'm just gonna start cutting, see where I end up, and then see what I have to do to fix it. So check that out. I just got this rocker set in here for now. It's the next day, by the way, because I had to do a lot of patching on this side. It was rough. Not horrible, but typical rough square body. Um, floor in the, at the rocker panel was rotted, or at the kick panel, so I had to put in a patch there. I got to patch the kick panel that goes up the side in here. Um, had to cut away the bottom of the rocker and patch that. Had to make a patch panel here on and on and on. Um, you won't see any of this stuff. There's no reason for me to try to make this look any better than it, than it does right now, simply because it's gonna be completely hidden. And a lot of body work is knowing how to hide stuff. It's, it's, it's never pretty almost. So even painted the inside of the rocker to give it a little extra protection, and then I'll come back in and spray the inside of all of the pillars, the roof, the doors with wool wax, which is just a rust preventative stuff. So the trick to putting these in, and I've put in probably about, I don't know, eight or ten sets of these, which is not a whole lot, but it's not a little uh, either, is just go slow. Don't overcut. That, if you do anything, you know, undercut and then grind a little bit away. Test fit, take it off. Test fit, take it off. Test fit, take it off. Until you're so sick of it that you just settle with what you got. Um, I think that I'm ready to tack this in and close this door to see how it fits. You got to every door's hung and fit proper. If the hinges are wore out in them, they won't sit straight and you'll put your rockers in crooked. And you don't want to do that because I've seen that done. And there's, there's just no, there's no way to fix that other than cut them out and put new ones in after that. So anyway, there we go. That's what it's going to look like. 
So I'm gonna buzz this in, close the door, check everything, and if it's good, then uh, I'll buzz it in permanently. So we got her tacked in, just tacked in enough to where it's holding it wherever, where it is, right? So, close the door, check the gap. I'm just looking at this gap down the bottom of the rocker here. And that's about as even as it's gonna get, I guess. It looks like it may be in just a slight bit, but then there's actually not nothing I can do about that. These old trucks weren't that straight anyway. That is good enough for me. So check out that driver's side rocker. This is what I've done on the entire truck up to this point. And that is just to make it look like it hadn't really been messed with. I want it to look like a rust-free truck, so I'm not gonna get into any body filler or anything like that anytime soon. So the only thing that's happened here is you seen I cut out the panel. I did replace anything that was rusty. I patched all that stuff up, put the panel on, welded it in, and spray painted it black. And it's gonna match the patina of the rest of the truck just fine. And what we're gonna do is cruise this thing. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and we're not going to be doing any body work on this, at least as far as I know. Uh, it's uh, kind of up to Elizabeth anytime real soon. We're going to get this thing together and drive the daylights out of it. I mean, that's perfect for me. I mean, it doesn't look like it's been messed with. It fits into the fits into the truck. It just looks like a rust-free truck. That's all I'm after. Just scuff all the way around it. All the edges and everything. And all that'll do is rough up the surface just a little because yeah, they're clean and give this stuff something to stick to. And we're just going to dust it on a little at a time. We don't want to fill in that uh, grain texture with paint. So with this stuff, we're just going to dust it on in small layers. I'll show you and then you can do it. back and come over here just squeeze it and just oh, sweep nice across one. yep like goats <laughs> <laughs> you'll get the hang of it i don't know if i will you're not gonna hurt anything just stay back a bit and just keep moving about this far yeah six eight inches about there yeah now squeeze and go back a little more yeah there you go there you go That's good now. Go to the other side. That's enough. Making You're not running nothing. You ain't got enough paint on there to run. It's all right. Those spots will clear up as we get into more coats. Get up here in this gap. Good, good enough. This stuff dries pretty quick. You just don't want to dump it on. And this is just the base anyway. This is not the color that we're going to use. It's just close. Yeah. We're just using this to cover up the white. Like no, you're doing all right. Just uh, try to focus on putting it on as even as a person can. Don't get too close with a spray can. Let me move this stuff out of your way. Coraline Jones. 
Coraline Jones. It's slowly. Huh? It's slowly coming out there. <laughs> yeah. They, there we go. They've been in there for. These who, doors who are. These panel? doors are a little crusty. Yeah. Who knows if they've ever. The door Probably panels haven't. have ever been off of them. Probably haven't. Does your old doors have this piece? Hmm. Mm. No. I don't know if I. I think Should maybe. I write on this? No. That's okay. I may have a. Some of them, I'm not for sure. I don't know if mine were any good or not. What does this Old part better come on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, it looks like a rat nest in there. Is there? They lived in the dorm. Mm -hmm. It's stinky. It does stink, don't it? Yeah. That's why you gotta pull these things apart after they sit in fields. Phew. <laughs> I don't want to stick my hand behind no. there. No. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on out there. There we go. There we go. And here we go. And a super mouse nest. Oh man, that's ripe. Throw so this away. Shoo, yeah. Ugh! <laughs> it's stout. <laughs> oh, gross. Water hose. <laughs> oh, it's so ripe. You may pull that trash can up here. Yeah, please. The Mouse Hotel. It is. It's a big one. <laughs> Sick. Did Ugh. they get that out of the door or did they get it like... Oh, uh, they get it out of anywhere <laughs> they can. Ugh. It's blowing at one. Gross. nest in this one, thankfully. So obviously the first step is to strip the panel and wash it thoroughly with just some soap and water. That's already been done. Now I'm scuffing it just lightly with a gray Scotch-Brite, not scuffing it enough to remove the texture that's already on this. I want to keep that and I want that to, to show through like it does on the when they're new. So I'm just lightly scuffing these panels to give this dye something to adhere to. Then we will wipe it down with some lacquer thinner, spray this stuff on. You'll see, just gotta scuff it really good in all of the recesses everywhere. We don't want this stuff coming off. Now that I got it scuffed, just going over it with a little bit of lacquer thinner on a rag. This is what my brother uses. He does this stuff all the time. He's had really good luck. I'm not telling you, you should use this stuff. That's what I'm using. What I have used in the past, what I used on my other truck, worked excellent. So now that this thing has been scuffed, it's been cleaned. It's time to put the dye on. Now the way that I do it, lots of light coats, as little of this stuff on the panel as possible to get full coverage. If you dump this thing, stuff on all at once, it doesn't seem to do near as good as if you just put it on in a lot of light coats. So what seems to work well? Let me show you. It's gonna going to look nice.
So there you go, about five coats later. Does have a little bit of damage up here from the sun, but I knew it would look like that. That's about, I'm guessing, $3 worth of dye. And you get a very nice outcome. Not all splotchy and sun faded. Here's a before, it's the other panel, and after. Check that out. Huge difference. Makes them super nice. Cora even approves. Don't you, girl? So I want to show you all of the interior panels just super quick that come out of that crew cab. We have just put in the elbow grease. That's all spent, I think, less than $60 on dye. And we have washed, scuffed, and dyed every single interior panel that that crew cab has. So when the doors are opened on it, it'll look like a brand new truck. Somebody will think that you know, you've spent a fortune on it when all you've done is just freshen up the stuff that's there. And that dye, I'm not affiliated with it at whatsoever, that Sims dye, that's the only one I have experience with. It's affordable and it does just an amazing job. It sticks to the panels really well. If you do scratch it, you can uh, you know, touch it up super easy and it doesn't show. So every crew cab that I've ever seen has a white headliner, white headliner trim, and a white uh, a door post cover. So we decided to go with burgundy on it. So we changed the color altogether. And you could do the same for any vehicle that you have. You, it doesn't have to be supported by the aftermarket community and you don't have to buy all new parts. It's just not necessary. You can get that dye, you can clean your parts up, and you can make them look just like this. You know, 35 year old seatbelt cover. Can't buy these. They don't have those for the square body available on the aftermarket community that I'm aware of. So your only option is to freshen them up. Oh, there's a door panel. There's nothing on this door panel that's not 35 years old. It's just been washed, polished, and re dyed. So there you go. Hopefully that'll inspire some of you to uh, get out there and uh, freshen up your own vehicle. You can do it for very, very cheap, and that dye holds on uh, really, really well. It's very, very, very user-friendly stuff. So there you go. All the interior panels complete. You are coming off one way or the other. So this back brake drum is giving me fits. This thing was locked up. And when we move this thing, it just drug this rear wheel. And the adjuster is just completely frozen solid. I can't get it to move no matter what I do. And I've had it just blazing hot. Like if it was any hotter, it would no longer be metal for the brake adjuster that squeezes the shoes out. And that's what's holding this thing. The shoes are pressed out against the drum and I just cannot get this off. Working on these heavy trucks, it just makes everything harder when the drums are so big. But I have got it moving. But that doesn't mean much. Still got a long way to go. She's moving. Not a lot, but she's moving. Ow! Goodness. You'd think that'd come right off her. Come on up there. There we go, finally. It's been every bit of two hours to get that off. Mm. 
So this adjuster here is what was frozen up. And if you can't get in, and you only got a little bitty window to go through the back, use this tool, do a little window in the back, and you screw down this adjuster. And if it's locked up, and your pads are out tight against the drum, and if they got any wear on them, like a maybe a lip or something, you just can't get the thing off and you got to battle. Um, at least not, you can't get it off easily. Obviously you can, but I did get it off. Now I gotta clean all the stuff up, see if I need to replace, uh, see what I need to replace and uh, what I can reuse. All in all, these rotors are actually not in that bad of shape. So we've got a lot of thickness there, at least they appear to be. Uh, no big ridge out here, no grooves, a little bit of rust, but it's not too bad. I believe this thing had had brakes done on it uh, not too long after it got parked, or not too long before it got parked. Um, no ridge, no uh, scoring inside of the drum, so I'm just going to leave these as is but while i'm in here i am going to replace these wheel seals and i am replacing the wheel cylinders these are the little hydraulic cylinders that squeeze out the brake shoes against inside of the rotor uh, because if the wheel seals leak or the wheel cylinders leak it just gums up your brakes and i'm in here these are like seven bucks or eight bucks and these are about the same so super cheap insurance to make sure that this thing just works when i get it back together so i'm going to pull this wheel seal out flush out these bearings because they got some old goop in them and then put uh, put a fresh seal back in it and we'll slam this thing back together. So these weren't leaking. But that don't mean that they weren't far from, you know, they're old, dried out, and it's best while we're, while we're in here just to go ahead and replace these. They're a really heavy duty seal, double lipped. They're pretty important that those don't leak. The bearings in this, they feel good, but I'm gonna clean them all up just to make sure. So the inside of the hub is all cleaned up. There was quite a bit of goop in there. That, front bearing comes out through the back, so it's held in by a C-clip. I'm not going to pull it out simply because the race has to be pulled out, and I'll probably do more damage than good. It feels good, it's clean, I'm going to leave it alone. Nothing but normal wear on these bearings. I'd bet money that these are the original bearings that come in this truck brand new. They've probably never been changed, along with the wheel seals. It's just an assumption based on the way that they look, but if I was a betting man, I'd bet money that they are. Anyway, they look good, plenty good enough for me to just stick back in. They'll last years and years, as long as they're cared for, uh, as is. So let's go over to the press. Let's take our new wheel seal and press that in. Goodness. This is what I'm going to use to press on it. Tap on it. Maybe get just starting. All right.
Don't press it in too far. Play a little bit more. All right, I think that's good enough. Yep, that should work. Well, I can't believe it. Brake line did come loose, but it broke. Or it just bent and it's so rusted thin that it, when I popped it loose, it broke about two inches away from the, from the nut. <sighs> yeah, that kind of stuff always happens. But.
first thing that I did is tear all of this stuff completely down and I sent it off, had it all sandblasted, and then had everything powder coated. I didn't, I didn't do that, I'm just playing. What I did is took a wire wheel and a wire brush, cleaned all this stuff up, and then spray painted it. Not trying to make this truck into something that it's never gonna be as long as I own it, because I can't afford to make a truck like that, nor do I want a truck like that. So we cleaned it all up and spray painted it to make it look presentable, and uh, that gave me a good opportunity to look over everything, lay my eyes on it, make sure that all the bolts are in there, pins are in there, nothing's seriously worn out. This truck is not getting anything replaced on it that doesn't need replaced. Um, also, I wanted to clean it up just for my sake because I'll be working on this thing and I, I don't like working on stuff that has grease piled on it that thick because whoever owned this truck before me, they did a really, really thorough job of greasing everything that had a grease fitting on it which I guess is good, but it also makes them really nasty when you go to work on them. So cleaned it all up, wire wheeled it, spray painted it. I did the wheel bearings, just took them out, cleaned them, packed them, because this thing, I don't know if it ever had that done. Um, rotors, turned this one, I haven't turned another one yet, and uh, cleaned up and powder coated, spray painted the uh, calipers. I did replace the brake lines because they're like seven or nine dollars a piece and they were 35 years old and falling apart. All the metal lines on this look good. I did uh, have to do some repairs on the core support. Had a little rust under the battery where they all do and I had to do a ton of work on the cowl on this truck. This was rusty. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. And if you buy one of these you need to be careful and raise the hood up and look at this seam here, because if it's got rust in that seam or rust down in this area here, if you're not into rust repair, you may want to stay away from that truck because they get goop and leaves down in here, fills up, sets for years, rots them out, then they start leaking on the inside, it rots your floors out, rots your quarters out, rots your carpet, makes your truck stink, on and on and on, and this truck was rusty in the cowl, so I had to go in and repair all of that. I've got a little bit of footage, I think, showing that, but. You know, it's not super exciting, so you know, I didn't, didn't film a lot of it, but got it all repaired. It's a big job, but uh, the only other option is really putting a front. You can buy, I think, this front piece, but you don't want to have to pay for one of those, and you can't find these cabs, at least in my area. If you, if you do find one, chances are it's rusty as well, so really the only option was to fix that. So did that. I'm really super happy with the repair that I did on it. You can't tell that it was done. Um, so... Uh, had to fix all that, did rockers, and front and back, partials in the back, uh, and actually partial in the front up here of the driver's side rocker was the worst. Let me show you the core support, radiator support, because it was rusty under the battery like they all are. Um, it has been sandblasted because I really did sandblast it, and then powder coated. By powder coated, I mean I spray painted it. So there's our core support, which supports the core of the truck. Everything attaches this pretty important structural piece. The hood latches on it, the front fender's attached to it, holds the headlights, holds the grill, holds the radiator. It's pretty, pretty important piece. Uh, all I did was pull this thing off, throw it in the gravel pile, use my pressure washer and my sandblasting attachment, and sandblast mostly the bottom of it because it was just getting rusty in, uh, towards the bottom, and then scuffed the top, spray painted it, Rust-Oleum semi-gloss black, which is my most favorite paint because it's cheap. I buy it by the case. It's durable. Over time it gets really hard. Not hard for the first week or so, but it seems like the longer it sets, the, the more durable it gets. I, I like the stuff. Did replace a patch in the back below the battery because they always rotted out there and this one was no different. Sandblast my headlight buckets and replaced the plastic uh, headlight adjuster hardware because they're always broke. So let me show you the repair that I did and I even still got the piece that I cut out just because I wanted to show you what I had to do. So there is the chunk that I cut out and it goes just like that. So all of that section there got cut out and replaced. I mean you can see that it was done there. I haven't drilled the holes yet. The inner fender well bolts up to this so I've got this as my template so I'll just mark that out and uh, weld on a couple nuts there and there's an ear here that I got to put here to bolt to the fender as well but I want to get this in the truck and get my fender up there so I can 
place that bolt properly. But you get the idea. I did this exact same thing to the other truck. You know, there's no reason to replace this entire core support because it's got a rusty spot here when it's no problem really to cut that out and weld in a piece. Nobody's going to see it anyway other than everybody that watches this video, but you, you get the idea. I'm trying to show you what can be done. And, uh, and to be honest, for a truck like what we're doing, it doesn't make any difference. This is going to work just fine. We ended up with not spending any money on a core support, just putting a little time into it. And this would be just as good as anything that you'd buy, probably even better. So that's what I did. Just cut that chunk out. Formed a piece, welded it back in. Good to go. So hopefully you've seen that there has been a lot accomplished on the crew cab in the last couple months, and I've just been doing it in late afternoons, you know, here and there, maybe a day or so on the weekend, just trying to stay focused on it, doing one piece at a time, not looking at the project as a whole, because that will overwhelm you very quick, or at least it does me anyway, because I know how much work is involved in building a pickup or building a shop or whatever, repairing equipment. There is a ton of work involved, and it helps me to look at the small pieces. I can do the fuel system. I can do, you know, I can lay a few block today. And before you know it, six months has passed and your whole project's done and you're just enjoying it. So if you have a project that you're, you know, that's eating at you, that you haven't accomplished, do one thing on it. Just one thing. It'll lead you to the next and the next and the next. And before you know it, you're done. Not trying to be a motivational speaker. I'm just telling you that's what drives me. Maybe, you know, that advice would help some others as well to get their projects going. So that is it. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help Elizabeth out on the crew cab, there is a link in the video description to an Amazon wish list where there are a few parts. So not, an, not a requirement, but just saying some people want to help. So that is it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anyone who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.